Hey YouTube, this is Marcus with another video. Today we're going to be doing some upgrades on our old home slash family server. Uh, a little bit of backstory on this thing. Uh, this actually started out as an HP Pavilion P6803W uh, tower slash desktop PC. And I basically stuck a bunch of Western Digital Red hard drives in it and have used it for file storage and lately we've also been using it to uh, host some game servers uh, and things of that nature and I wanted to do some upgrades so I've actually been doing some upgrades to it because I wanted better cooling because the original case didn't have any intake fan on the front it had holes where the exhaust fan and things could pull air in but it had it did not have any forced air coming in through the front uh, so I wanted better airflow uh, I wanted it to be easier to access and work on and I also wanted it to look a little bit cooler and I also wanted to improve the performance of it. It's using integrated graphics which is fine for a server. It's running Debian Linux, the latest version of that as of today which is the 26th of February 2018 and I've made a couple of changes in the past few days. Uh, the first change obviously it is not in its original case. Uh, I had this case laying around and never re really used it for anything so I thought it would be a good case for the server uh, and I'll show you why here in a minute. The reason I like this case is that both of the side panels come off the motherboard lays down horizontally and uh, on top of that you can back out some screws here and the whole top and front as one piece folds forward kinda like a giant clamshell so that it's really easy you know let's say you're putting a graphics card or something to come in from the top and install your part and then close it all back together and have it look cool I've already upgraded it from the single stick of 1066 uh, megahertz uh, DDR3 RAM. It had a single 4 gigabyte stick of that. I've upgraded it to four 4 gigabyte modules for a total of 16 gigabytes of Corsair XMS3 1333 megahertz DDR3. So you can see here we've got the Corsair XMS3 RAM. For whatever reason, it's not picking up that it's 1333 megahertz, even though the motherboard specification says it supports that. Uh, so I may tinker around with that a little bit. Uh, but here's the old stock cooler. The CPU is an AMD Athlon 2 X2 220, which is a two-core, two-thread CPU uh, running at 2.8 gigahertz. You can see that this case has a large intake fan in the front, which has LED lights on it. And it also has an exhaust fan on the back. So it has a cross flow of air, not counting the actual CPU fan itself. I also upgraded from two 3 terabyte Western Digital Red drives to a single 12 terabyte Western Digital Gold drive. That is the largest consumer drive that I was able to find and purchase on Amazon or Newegg. Uh, and it ran me just under $500 for it. What we're doing today is we're actually going to upgrade the CPU, which is the last part in this rig that I'm going to worry about upgrading. What I have here is I have an AMD Phenom 2 X6 uh, 6 core 6 thread CPU clocked at 2.7 gigahertz I think it turbos up to 3.2 or something in that neighborhood. It is used but I did get it from uh, Amazon and so hopefully you know there's reasonable expectation of success with this. I also since we're tripling the horsepower I went ahead and grabbed the AM3 socket compatible Wraith cooler which should do a much better job than this piddly little thing would do with six cores underneath it. Now the Phenom 2 X6 1045T is the model we're using today and that CPU, from the information I can find, is the best CPU that will fit on this motherboard. Now that is not the best CPU that will fit in the AM3 socket, but that's the best one that this motherboard could drive. I was having, I was finding conflicting information about, uh, basically on HP's website they have listed that it supports the Phenom chips up to 95 watts TDP, so you cannot exceed 95 watts. And when I was looking at, say, the 1055, one step above this chip, some websites said it was 95 watts, some said it was 125, so I just went ahead with the highest one that I could consistently find paperwork saying that it was a 95 watt chip. And that is the Phenom 2 X6 1045T. 
1045T. So let's go ahead and open up this bad boy and uh, see about upgrading the CPU and making sure everything works. Alright, so I've sort of given you guys a top-down view so you can kind of see what's going on here. Let me scoot this over a little bit. Alright, so we've got this side panel out. You guys watch me take it out. I'm going to go ahead and back out the two thumb screws for the other side panel here. Here, remove the side panel. This actually got bent in storage, and that's one reason I was like, you know what, let's just put it to use. It's just sitting back there getting damaged. All right, now we actually have to take out two regular just Phillips head screws that are in these corners here that will allow us to open up the clamshell. All right, so now we should be able to just gently fold the clamshell open here. There we go. So now, let me see, you guys can see okay there? There we are. All right, so now I'm going to unhook the CPU power plug because we may end up having to reroute this. And uh, so now I can flip up the retaining bar on the old cooler here. Flip that retaining bar up and then unhook the two hooks here. Get those loosened. There's the first one. These are always weird how these little retaining bars work. Like I've always got to fight with them and then it's just like they just magically pop off. They're, they're loose. Alright, let's unplug the fan power and we should can I get to the CPU no so I'm gonna have to remove the cooler from the CPU and that is probably there it goes so there's the old stock cooler we'll set that off to the side here is the old Athlon 2x2 220 get that dust bunny out of there This thing has earned its keep, and then some. Set that over here to the side. And now, let's get our new Phenom 2 X6 1045T. Now, for those of you who don't know, the AM3 socket and therefore this CPU are what's known as PGA, which means that with Intel chips and even now newer AMD Threadripper chips uh, there's sort of little pins on the socket and then there's just flat contact points on the CPU itself that make contact with this socket there's holes in the socket and there's actually gold pins here let me get you guys lined up here there's actually gold pins on the CPU itself that insert into those holes so I'm going to give this a look over because it is used, but the pins do not appear bent. So you can see here on the socket, you got your four corners. One of those corners, in this case this one, has a small triangle. You see that little, that little small triangle that's molded into the plastic right there? We're going to line up the triangle on the PCB of the CPU with that triangle. So we're going to line those two up and it should drop right into place bam no force required if you make sure there's no dust in there I thought I saw a little piece of dust on there if you feel like you have to force the CPU in you're either doing it wrong or you have bent pins there we go so now we're gonna go ahead and lock this down now the new cooler actually has thermal compound on it uh, which I've actually used the Wraith on other CPUs and I've compared the thermal compound that comes on it with the MX4 thermal compound that I keep on hand and I didn't really see any difference so it's it's at least halfway decent thermal compound that they include on these coolers here but before we apply the cooler I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol 91 percent to clean the top of this because it is used and I want to make sure that there's no finger oil or old thermal compound or dirt or anything like that that's on this that might decrease the efficiency of the heat transfer from the IHS to the cooler. There we go. That's nice and clean. So now we need to take our cooler 
and it doesn't particularly matter which side you have the power cord for the CPU on. I'm going to orient this the same way the old one was, so I'm going to seat it down in here. There we go. Basically, you have these little tabs on the socket here, and these this metal bar comes through the cooler and hooks here and back here, and this side has a little locking mechanism so that once both sides are hooked, there we go, both sides are hooked, we just rotate the little locking bar here, and it applies the downward force that locks the cooler into position. So now all we have to do is plug in our CPU fan control. Now in this case, we have a four pan fan header or fan control wire, but a three pan header. You just line up the tab like you would normally and it'll still work just fine. You'll just only be using three pins, but it will still function. We'll take our CPU power. Will it reach? Barely. Do we have any slack that could be uh, pulled? There we go. Just barely. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like a common theme that CPU power cords from the power supply are literally just barely long enough to make it to the actual socket on the motherboard. My gaming PC the CPU power cord from the power supply is ran up the back of the case and zip tied out of sight up next to a fan because it was too short to make the trip behind the back plate and back out a hole that was actually up there for that specific purpose. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a zip tie and zip tie this slack here. Uh, we're done. Oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. So let's close this bad boy back up. Right. And it's, it's closed up good enough. Uh, I don't have the side panels or anything on it right now because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure that we actually got a working uh, CPU. Let's give it a video cable here so I can uh, there's video. Get my little wireless keyboard out here. Alrighty, so we got power on and press the button. Wherever it is. Well, that's a good sign. It is booting. AMD Phenom 2X6 1045T. All right, so we can see here that we have the AMD Phenom 2X6 1045T. It's at 2.7 gigahertz. It has three megabytes of level two, six megabytes of level three cache. So this is a pretty decent little CPU. I think it uses the Thuban core, which I believe may be either a precursor or an alternative to Bulldozer, which was uh, used in the FX chips. So I just noticed something, and I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not. This Wraith cooler made contact with that heat sink there. And I don't know if that's going to take away from its ability to cool the CPU or not. I don't know, is it making good contact with the CPU and just happened to make contact with that too? Or is that holding up a corner where it's not making good contact with the CPU? We'll find out. Alrighty, so let's uh, let's go ahead and re-encode a video with Handbrake here. That should eat up all of the cores and uh, give us something, you know, that it'll take a while. There we go. Let's do a Blu-ray movie. Alright, and we'll say high profile and we'll stick it on our desktop here I just wanna I just wanna hit that the CPU and start there it goes okay so hitting refresh in hard info does not actually refresh the information I just I was I wanted to make sure we didn't have like a faulty core so we have all six cores running at their appropriate speeds and uh, handbrake is currently encoding a video here we're averaging 24 frames, well, yeah, about 24 frames a second. You can see here, we are pegging all six cores here. 
and uh, I'm going to let it run for a bit. All right, so you can see here we've got all six cores being hammered pretty good by handbrake, and uh, handbrake is still running. We've got P sensor here, which is an application for monitoring temperatures, but it's picked up some weird sensors that I don't think it should have. But it looks like I'm going to guess the highest one right there is our CPU. We just dropped one. So uh, I'm going to let it run for a good 10 minutes. Uh, let me make sure we're, we're still hitting all six cores because it's not fair for only hitting one or two. So we are hitting all six cores. And I'm going to let it run for a little while and make sure that temperature right there, or any of them, stays under control. So it seems like we're good. It's been running for about five minutes. You can see there's all six cores still pegged, still running and it uh, has leveled off at about 45 degrees uh, which makes sense because this uh, AM3 socket Wraith cooler from AMD is actually a 125 watt cooler but the CPU is a 95 watt CPU so we should have no problems with thermals. The only thing that was a little bit concerning to me was that contact point right there it seems like it probably just made contact as it was being seated and it has not negatively impacted the thermal so we are good to go so I'm gonna close this bad boy back up and uh, stick it back on the closet and let it do its thing uh, it's actually in addition to rendering the movie it's also running a rust and a minecraft server in the background nobody's connected to it uh, but uh, that's all going on right now so the six core Phenom 2 X6 is definitely, it, it even feels snappier because before with the dual core, especially when you first logged in and it was still bringing rust and everything up to speed, uh, the interface, if you had it in here on a screen, the interface was noticeably sluggish and, uh, and it's, it's noticeably, and it's much snappier and more responsive now and, uh, and I'm happy with the purchase so uh, I just wanted to make a quick vlog and show you guys my little home server project that I've made out of an old HP tower and uh, the process for upgrading the CPU so if you guys have any comments questions concerns or suggestions please feel free to post them in the comment section below and as always this is Marcus out y'all take care have a good